for those of you who aren't familiar with the show, it's been on. I think it's his hundredth season. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and it's the it's a human experiment where they put people on a deserted island, they put them in the groups, into tribes, into you know whatever, mm. and they have to survive. The early iteration of this, literally, they had to find their own food. People were losing hundreds of pounds. Now they do all of these different reward things where they can eat Applebee's and all kind of Outback food. And get... That's a reward? Yeah, yeah, they get, like, exactly. <laughs> but nobody's losing 100 pounds anymore. <laughs> but there's still this kind of social experiment where you put people on an island mm. and, and ask, you know, ask them to vote people off. Yeah. So the early seasons, there was only just one black a season. Right, you got Cherie, mm -hmm. Gervais, you got you yeah. know different people. Um, and then one season they decided to do a race one where they had like uh, a tribe of black people, a tribe of Asians, a tribe of Hispanics, and a tribe of a tribe of whites. Mm -hmm. Passed over again. I get it. That's fine. <laughs> That's I think deal. you made it into the blacks. <laughs> Listen, I'll Not you. according to the last caller. Not <laughs> but what was crazy? Was there a devil what, worshiper group. What was crazy about that is that the myth is that black people don't stick together. Every time mm. there's more than two black people on Survivor, black people win. Every single time there's more than two black people on Survivor, black people win. And that, that year that they did the different tribes, three black people, because they, they had three people to go to the finals, all three of the people in the finals were black. So all the black people made it to the finals that year that they separated Because the they were working together? We worked together. I see. Y'all can start with that bull crap if you want to. Y'all can do it. But the truth of the matter is we actually do. And low key, the Big Brother house too. If there's two or more of yeah. us, if two Candy more and Tamar together, didn't really like each other, but they, they the worked together. They worked together. You and Ricky was there too. That's and Ricky's right. complicated. Complicated AF. You don't even know what we're talking about. That's Big does Brother, the other show that you don't yeah. watch. Does Jesus want you both watching yes, Survivor? He does. He does. Mind your this, business. Don't bring this, Jesus into this. You seen a you Where's the Holy, where's the Holy Ghost? I won't watch. defend you next time somebody calls you white if you keep this up. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> However, <laughs> last night I I got checked. I got my my I got checked by Survivor. Mm. All right. Uh -huh. So you know, every day we talk about black and white. I'm not going to stop talking about it until racism no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So y'all go ahead with that. And generally, when someone calls up with some bull crap, they're going to get this smoke. <laughs> I'm usually going to troll the F out. The, hang up, take them down, bring them back up, punch them again verbally, take them down, <laughs> hit them some what more. What makes you white? Bring them back. Right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. We're going to have fun with you. Because I feel like it's not my job to educate you. Right, right. Go, d go find a, a library, a dictionary, or something. You know, immerse yourself on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's not my job. And if you're listening to this show, you're only calling up the troll. So, but if I'm on an island with somebody <laughs> and I don't have any choice, we half naked out there pooping in the ocean or whatever they're doing, because that's how they do. I'm sure that I'm all, I have all these questions. Like, how do you go to the bathroom? So many questions. This, this one group, there's a, you know, a black man. On, on this one group, and they're sp split into two groups. Black man, on, and there's four black people this season. And I'm already seeing them working together. <laughs> is it nine total or something like that? I don't know how. It's like it's 100. A lot it's like of 100 people. people. This is it's my a point. Lot of it's wow. usually like 20 people, and uh -huh. they only put one black person okay. or two black people. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so that's why we got to fill out the census because it's more than 15% of us. Anyway, sure. everybody in Survivor, they wear this thing called a buff, which is like a headband that can. That could be a thing. It could be a kerchief. You could wear it as a bra. You could wear it as panties. You know, it's a buff. <laughs> and they wear it in different creative ways. So the black guy was cooking the rice or something, and the white guy comes over to him and says, why don't you pick it up with your do-rag? Oh. Wow. So he's like, <laughs> he said, you mean my buff? Like, it's a buff. Why would you call that a do-rag? And he was like, uh, and then off my, he was like, I don't know why I said that. It's really stupid. <laughs> you know? And yeah. the confessional. Yeah, and the I, yeah, I'm really I don't sorry. know how Durag came I into my head. I haven't <laughs> eaten in four days. I haven't had pants in a week. Right. So I'm shitting in the ocean. So I don't the guy know what guy's name is Jamal, I think, which is like a classic <laughs> black, and he teaches African dance. Like he's really <laughs> super cool. So he, but he's super like I don't even want to call him articulate because it's almost insulting. But right. he he's so thoughtful because I would have lit that motherfucker up. <laughs> it would have been the most uncomfortable. Yeah, you gonna do it in the ocean and you gonna get this do rag. Right. And I was, I, you know, I would just let him. I would just light him up for the right, whole. Right, and right. probably get voted off. <laughs> but I'm gonna go out in flames, right? But he was like. Every day I have to deal with microaggressions on the job. And a lot of it I just let roll off my back because there's no gain for me if I have to check every time somebody says something culturally inappropriate. And it right. seems like a small thing, but it adds up, he said. 
And he said, I don't, I don't know how to, off mic, the black guy was like, you know, I got to deal with this on this island with these people in a social game yeah. and have to navigate this. Like, do-rag, really? Yeah. All of the images of what it means to be a black man, a do-rag, tattoos, the hoodies, and all mm -hmm. of this negative stuff. And I'm on an island with people, and you've been with me these days, and that's what you're going to call a do-rag? Yeah. So the white guy's like, oh, I have, <laughs> well, what's going to happen? He's big. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. In the face of this low-key racism, because, you know, they didn't call him the N-word. Right. He said do rag. And he said it because he's black. And this these things do add up, particularly in the workplace, and a lot of us just navigate it because what else do you have, we have to, to do? I had a buddy of mine that started working uh, at a job, and he was like, oh, I guess we got to get cocoa butter now. <laughs> yeah, in front of the whole office, right. <sighs> yeah, and what, your first day on the job. <laughs> oh, what do you do God. with that? Oh, my what God. What do you do, what with, do, you that? do with that, right? Oh. And so you laugh it off, or do you go ham on the first day on the job, and, and the person, you know, and everyone's looking at you, and you're the only black person. And I, now you're angry. Right. You're the angry, aggressive new guy. Right. So, new black guy. Yes. So, so... But he taught this man. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't it's a teachable go moment. Yeah, and I and I said to myself, "Wow, that was really instructive." Not just for that guy, because if anybody watched Survivor last night, I think there are a lot of people sitting at home who have done things like this, who are now convicted in their spirit and know yeah. why they shouldn't do it anymore. Because he was so eloquent in breaking down how people show up in the world and why that was so offensive and why it seemed like it was a small thing, but on top of everything else that a black person has to deal with in America, that just could be the th straw that breaks the back. And this right. is why you don't do that. And, this, and the guy was like really apologetic, which he, you know, you saw that. And I was like, maybe I should change my tactics. But then I came to the conclusion that, you know, different people are made for different things. And this goes for everybody listening. You got to find your thing. Yeah. If your thing is teaching white people how to be better, better human beings, go for it. Yeah. If your thing is putting smoke out there and incinerating them and singeing off eyebrows, you do the best eyebrow singeing you can do. Because yeah. it's all, to me, it's all collectively towards the greater good. Well, I think I, I find myself as an ally as well, and I, I try to step in when I see things like that as well. Just recently, I had someone at work that was talking about diversity and very sweet, very sweet woman. And she just said, you know, what? I don't I just don't see color. I just everyone's equal to me. And I was like, OK, I I understand. I understand what you are saying. But and then you have to go into the, like, the litany of reasons of why that is wildly problematic, because I knew if I were to come down the way I felt, why right. that made me feel, then it would have put her in a defensive position and then locked her in and been like, oh, people are coming down on me, blah, blah, blah. But if you make if you flip it and you say, hey, I got you, I know where your heart's at, but let me tell you how to make your heart match how you talk. And that's right. something that's yeah. I find I like to do that because you're good at it. Yeah, this I, is my point. Yeah, yeah, and not everyone should, frankly. You know, not everyone's I, good at it. Because yeah, my screw face is so nasty, <laughs> especially I, especially after I've been on hiatus from corporate America for a yeah, little bit. Yeah. So like my <laughs> my my poker face has atrophied significantly yes. in the last few months or whatever. Um, but I agree with I agree with you a hundred percent on on how the language of diversity from a, from a corporate standpoint has to change. Carolyn Johnson and I of Diversity Inc. who's on who's on the show all the time. She and I have this conversation a lot because I what I've said to her is that I believe that we've got to change the entire lexicon around diversity because a lot of the way we've been talking about diversity and inclusion over the course of the last ten years is no longer effective because people just as soon as you say privilege to a certain to a certain demographic it just they're like look i'm tired with this whole i have privilege thing right like miss me with that they immediately shut down we've got to start changing like the language and talk about diversity but you know to that to that point of you know that's a strong brother that 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 oh he was he was yeah. so beautiful Last i would, i sat there and i i literally said maybe i should change my cuz these are all strat stratagem tactics yeah you know of course you could do things different ways you know for me sitting here in this seat what i've calculated is that there are a hundred and something channels if you're purposely listening in on the show and then have the audacity to pick up and then you start in with your what you what you know and what you think right there's only one black ch channel and i it's my responsibility for all of the millions of black folk who can't say the things that i can say yeah. Can't do the things that I can do sitting in this seat. As long as I'm sitting here, I'm going to do it for all my ancestors, for Harriet Tubman and them, yeah. for everybody that couldn't speak back, for everybody that ever thought they wanted to but couldn't. I'm going to do it for them. That's my role. I accept it.